Friends Bar River Hunting Tar. They're up here for a tar ballot 2019. It's Friday the 15th of June and we're getting picked up next Friday. So it's the evening now, we've just finished setting up camp, flew in this afternoon and heading out for our first hunt. We've got a couple of hours until dark and then we've got five whole days and it looks like we might have five days of pretty good weather. Uh, this block here we've been dropped off up quite higher up at about 900 metres here and we've got really good tar country both around out to our right and out to our left here. It's our first time hunting tar. Um, we're set up with the 7 mil rem mag here. Chris has got a 708 and um, we're all decked out with the main gears so we're just going to shoot up the hill here and have a glass and a little bit of a look around. It might rain tomorrow and then we've got um, three or four days of really good weather so come for a walk. We're just having a quick glass from camp here and Chris can see um, tar marks in the snow just above camp here so early signs look good. There's some tar shit right there. careful in glass property that we don't spook tar real close to camp just got to make sure we glass properly before we move too much well the jacket lasted all of about bloody five minutes and we're straight down to the t-shirt but the layers will be going straight back on as soon as we stop, which is pretty cool. Just trying to climb up and sidle around and look into a couple of gullies and scrubby faces up around the corner here. <clears throat> this country is insane. The scale of it's crazy in person. Bloody good, eh? <laughs> Bloody good. <laughs> Just gave the new gun its first knock by the sound of that. I think I'm a touch low here. But the wind's coming down too. Some nice little scrubby areas right here. Gonna have a bit of a look around here in a glass. Looks good. Just gonna put the camera down for a second scope this out properly. We've just spotted our first tar, bloody barely 10 minutes out from camp, straight below us here. A couple of nannies, that's real cool. This is on the GoPro, I've got a big zoom camera in the bag that we can get out. <coughs> real cool to have eyes on it's literally level with camp about 150 meters from camp just down here it's like just right on that edge there right there yep. got a primo glassing spot here heaps of awesome country out in front of us. All of these spurs here. And 
even right down there, right down over there, it's all just primo. Gonna sit here and have a good glass. Shit, she's all go. <laughs> We're debating shooting that a kid that was with that nanny, because that'd be bloody tasty camp meat in a couple of days. We shot that now. It's like a half growing kid. If we shot that now and hung it up under a tarp at camp, that'd be beauty in a couple of days, which we need some camp meat at some point. But then we're going, there's probably a bull tar just around the corner and it's way too early to be shooting nannies and kids because we've got meat with us. But then you go, well, hunters have got to start shooting more nannies and kids. But um, maybe not on the, in the first 10 minutes, eh? So we're nipping just over here, 100 meters, to see what's just around the next corner down the next couple of guts. It's about an hour of light left. So just coming up to prime time with some tar coming out of the bush just below us here. Be cool to get eyes on a few more animals tonight. Maybe even a bull would be awesome. Tomorrow the weather might be a bit average. So just trying to get out and about tonight. Said, stay low and look down because that's where they'll be. Just like this. Because if we were a little bit higher. sort of spot I'd expect a bull to move through in the next half hour or so.
sitting here just around from camp looking at a cracking bull down here he's definitely not a thumper he's not a 13 or 14 he might go 12 eh yeah maybe maybe yeah, or he might be cool. yeah he might be 10 or 11 or something yeah. beautiful mane on big blimmin mane and we're just really sizing up neither of us have shot a tar before we're looking at a seriously reasonable bull but what do you want to do i'm happy to leave him i'm happy to leave him we can run here for a week got good a week of good weather and he's right here we could probably come and hang out here and see him again you know he's probably just going to hang out on that this bit of stuff there's other tar poking around down there too and if we leave him we might come back and see a bigger bull here with him yeah. he's a cracker though what a amazing mane on him and to see a bull tar like that right here that quick and just have eyes on him and get that shot of him and all that is just but he made the trip already Awesome main. There's a nanny in the scrub right in front of me. Not even a hundred meters away. I just want to quietly walk up and look over the edge. Oh, she just saw me and took off. I don't know if she saw me, but she just took off. More tar popping out just down here. Way too close. I'm right on the skyline and the wind's wrong. <laughs> uh, it's just cool to see them and get a feel for what's going on around here and what the next week's going to be like. I'm going to keep glassing. Find a big bugger across the other side there. It's, this is golden hour, eh? It's just that last I mean, 20 minutes of good light. I'm moving around. Just heading back to where I left Chris, watching that ball. Now we're back at base here. Here's the inside of our tent. I'm just getting a little Radix freeze dried feed on the go and cooking a couple of steaks. Um, Chris is just going to sleep in this tent on his own for the start. We're not going to light the fire tonight. Um, and I've got my own tent over there so we can bloody snore and roll around and on our own. Um, but if it gets real cold or something, I'll, I'll bring my stretcher in here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, bloody awesome little evening hunt that, going out and seeing a whole heap of tar close to camp. Um, seeing that bull, we were talking about it and we both agree, probably... He could easily be a 12 inch bull, but um, not that we're experts, but we don't think he'd be much over that. Um, happy to let him go and really happy with that evening hunt. So we're absolutely buggered. Um, we only had a couple of hours sleep last night and did a heap of driving and did their hunt. So we're just going to have a feed and crash out. And um, But yeah, we'll attack that in the morning. See you then. So um, 
Chris has just fired up the little fire here in the MIA Westlander tent. And shit, it is warm in here. And it is bloody cold outside. I don't know what it would be out there, but it's way below zero. It's just dropped off. Over the last hour, temperatures just plummeted. Um, I literally had to put gloves on, just um, setting up the camp stretcher and blowing up my um, Neo Air. Um, and it is bone bloody cold out there. And it is real warm in here. Um, <clears throat> what you were just saying, like if you're in here for a few days and you copped a bit of rain, even if it wasn't rain, it's fine weather, but just bone cold. Um, pretty hard work getting back to camp every day that cold. And you basically just have to cook a feed quickly and get in bed, you know. Um, but then if you've got a bit of rain, eh, and your gear got wet, mm. um, you dry all your gear out and all that. But, you know, I'm from the North Island. This is one of my first, um, well, this is my first proper winter trip right up high in the Southern Alps. Um, and first night, <laughs> um, without the rain, I can see how valuable these tents are, eh? With mm. a good fire. Oh, shit, yeah. And how she could be pretty bloody rough. Well, the weather's been pretty good, you know. Good. First night, and the weather's perfect. And it's cold. And it was like, and I was only outside for half an hour, so we haven't even got wet yet. If you had, you can do it, and people do it, and people will always do it, but um, if you can get one of these tents and have a fire and that, you're bloody way ahead, eh, of someone with, like, shit. shit. Drying gear out, warming up. Trying out quite a bit of new gear on this trip. Actually, got the the new um, gun there, which is just a Tika with a nice carbon stock on it, and the Night Force scope and the Hardy suppressor and a nice um, bipod. We'll be doing a review on a lot of that stuff. I'm trying out this new Under Armour gear, which I really like so far. The pants and jacket. Um, and I'm also trying out this Under Armour Thermal, which I just put on. This is the Level 3 Under Armour Thermal. And the guy hunting and fishing said that'll be too hot to walk in. And I said, sweet, that's good because I want it for a sort of a, a bit of an emergency layer for when it gets cold as hell. Because um, we might fly camp um, for a night or two. So that type of thing, or when you're glassing and you're just getting real bloody cold and you're not moving... And you just need a real warm layer on. I put that, the level three, um, on outside when I was setting up, and um, it's bloody warm, real good. Serious bit of um, bloody thermal. And we've got some gloves and <clears throat> some new ice axes, some New Zealand made ice axes, and quite a few bits and pieces. Well, um, I don't know how much I'll get into it in this hunting vlog, but we're going to make a whole heap of um, proper gear reviews. In separate videos, so. So. Right, morning of day two. We're just climbing back up to those, those guts we were hunting last night. A um, little bit of snow early this morning, real light bugger all. Um, the weather today seemed to be a little bit iffy, it could sort of go either way, but it doesn't look too bad so far. Um, she's bloody cold, bloody fresh, but fresh on the old nose. Just puffing our way up this hill. My cardio is terrible at the moment. Muscles are alright, so I've been lifting weights, but my cardio is ridiculous. But um, that's alright, we don't have to go far, so we're just um, working our way up here for another little bit more and then see if that bull's back or see if some nannies are around and we'll get a little bit further around that face and work a couple more of those guts.
that was exciting. I just shot my first bull tar. Um, literally seen him there. We got set up and right, he's literally 60 yards down, just over the brow. He was standing in a different position when I looked down and I was waiting for Chris to get the camera on him. And I looked back down, he was walking away and I literally up with the rifle and shot him right between, from straight down, right between the shoulder blades, right, right as he walked out of sight. And last I seen him, he was rolling, but I don't think he's going too far. Brew and make a plan then. I reckon we get down there and have a brew. Have right a brew on. with him. I reckon he's probably hung up in the beach just right there. He'd probably enjoy a last cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This is a bit we're going to have to be careful with, bro. We'd your ass up off here and your fucking. What do you think? Get down there or? We definitely could, but for safety, we're probably better off spending um, spending quarter of an hour going around. Shit, now we're tar hunting. Bloody hanging on the side of this stuff. <coughs> Just going bloody slowly. Always got a good fistful of something. It's pretty, it's pretty safe, but you can still bloody hurt yourself. And I've left Chris up the top instead of trying to come down together and rolling stuff down. Or if I can't get right down, at least I've got a man back up top. That's still good. Yep, she's good as gold. Yeah, I'm right. I'm well off to the side. I'm gonna go down and get off to the side till you get down. going to sit off to the side till Chris gets down. Big hazard when Chavelin and Piers is knocking stuff down on top of your mate. Eh? She's, it's not too bad. I don't know how much the camera's doing it justice but it, she's steep enough. If you slipped and did one bounce you'd be you'd do yourself some serious damage. It's actually quite a bit more technical down here than you would think. What looks like sort of rocky shingly stuff 
is uh, the scale's different. All the rocks that look like shingly stuff you walk down are actually quite big rocks that you actually slide on instead of walk on, you know. And little bits of rock like that, that look like something you'd step over are actually almost two meters wide and you'd, it's a solid rock so you've got to go around it, you know. So it's good just having all day today to get down here and muck around in the stuff and get comfortable and try to find this bull and it's good having the time. I reckon he was standing just here somewhere and he rolls straight down here and there's a few good scuff marks there and there's a bit of hair here right there there's a bit of hair so I'm gonna try I reckon he's rolled straight down here so I'm gonna leave my pack over here and have a look around Big bit of bull here. If he made it this far, I'd say he'd be bloody. If he's come down here, he's a big bit of bull here, and some fresh scuff marks. More here. If he's come down here, he's got some serious bloody momentum, and I'd say he's gone right down. Um. I'll have a quick look though, around in this stuff. And then maybe just wait there a second. Well, we've got big fistfuls of hair up there and a little chunk of skin. And there's, I haven't found blood yet, but there's hair coming straight down this chute. And I felt like I plugged him right down between the shoulders with the ELDX. Um, 162 grain ELDX and that'll just blow up in his chest so I wouldn't even be surprised if there's no exit um, and there's not even heaps of blood um, but we'll just follow the skid marks and hair trail straight down there I don't reckon you'd glass him from the other side because he's standing in under those trees with all this in the way mm. they're really the only place you're going to see him from is either if you're stalking through these bluffs or just poking your head over these one or two little bits. Mm. Um, and a guy back at the um, hangar, when we were about to fly in, said he's been in the block opposite this, glassing over this way, and he's watching guys walking around just up in the tussock, 20 metres too high, and they're looking at a big bull like that, standing just over the lip, and you can't do anything, you know? And he said, he said, don't look up, come straight around from camp and look down and that's bloody exactly where we found our first tar. Old guys um, know what they're talking about sometimes. How's that bloody cliff over the other side there? It's nuts, it's like, oh hell, that's two or three hundred meters basically vertical eh? Solid, t easy 200 meters, I just vertical rock wall that sucker right there um we heard a shot from the other block too so good to hear they're um into something not that we know them but still good what do we got going on? what do you reckon oh i think we might be in from a bit more than what we think eh? <laughs> <laughs> we won't be going we way down yet if yeah we a bit of momentum eh? yeah i agree yeah should be, 
Should be a bit hairy going down, but I don't think it'll be too bad. It'll be <laughs> going back up there so it'll get us. Yeah. So we can have a nap this afternoon. Yeah, back to camp for bacon and eggs. Shit, yeah, and tar nuts. <laughs> oh, but, nuts. I'm not going to lick its nuts, but I'm definitely going to take a nut or two home and um, back to camp and try it. Shout out to Josh James. Um, was it. Uh, was that, did he, was he, do they eat the first, the nut from the first bull tar you eat, or is that something he does on a stag do? No, you just gotta eat it every time. <laughs> it's just, any time you get near a testicle of an animal you killed, it's just um, good etiquette to eat it. Mm. You, is it. So you reckon you're keen for a taste, though? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was Smitty said it, you reckon it tastes a bit like um, scallop. Love scallop. What if I can see about that? <laughs> <laughs> I love scallop, so. Anyway, we'll bloody um, make our way down. Have a look around here, there's a real fresh bit of dirt. See that? That bit of dirt just sitting right there. That's been kicked off something this morning. Just sitting there. All of this is all old, nothing, nothing. There's just a couple of bits of fresh dirt, and this is right in line with where I'd expect them to come down. Wouldn't be surprised if he hung up here somewhere. He still could also be above here. But I'll just have a look, see if I can see a lump of hair or even a tart laying down. Here somewhere would be even better. And then I'll shoot back up and check up there. There's a bit of a scuff mark there. But that could... That could even just be a tar just walking. It doesn't look dead fresh either. And no here, we'll have a look, we'll check up. I just caught a big whiff. I just caught a big whiff. Big whiff. <sighs> big whiff off the ground right here. Like he's bounced here. Oh, yeah, he's definitely come down here, man. There's a big slam mark right here. Big slam mark and a few bits of hair. <laughs> definitely. More hair. So he's come down there. I'd say he's bounced off there, and that's where I can smell there. And he's bounced off there and gone right over. And that's right in line with that bit of fresh dirt I found down there too. He's down over that edge. I'm going to go up to that little gravel edge first and look over. Might be able to see him laying down there. I think I might have eyes on. Got a dead bull. I'll mark here. So if we do have to go right around, we know he's straight below this mark. Oh, it's so good to get eyes on him. But the shot was good and he's down. Well, we just spent the last two hours getting down only about 150 meters of bluffs. 
and my bull tars line about 15 meters away and I just got a flat shingle waltz wander to get to him. He's had quite the tumble so we don't know how much he's been beat up. This is my first bull tar. Chris is saying he's right next to going over the next one. He is bigger than you think. I'll give you that, mate. Mm. with that no matter what he measures eh? 11 and a half almost 12 just off 12 pretty much what we said eh? yep not bad for the first I'm, time yeah mate. i'm happy with that mate. that's awesome look at a cape on it yeah amazing skin on it it's good to know too that what we were gauging him at is about exactly what he is mm. um you were bang on you said i reckon he'll go almost 12. Mm. Just um, from looking through those binos, eh? Just when he had his head sideways, you could really yeah. gauge it against his head. Yeah, and he didn't, yeah. And and the real big buggers get that, because um, as they grow out from the bases, they, they get more wide, and he just looked a bit narrower, and they sort of come out and then hook back in. But um, I'm stoked with that, mate. That's the Run, good wool tar in a winter coat, bucket mm. list ticked off. In some pretty cool country. Yeah. Just watch, watch out up. I might kick something down. Sleep me on. See me get up this last little bit. Speechless. How's the biggie? Good as gold, brother. Good as gold. Good as gold. I love it. I love it, Mark. <laughs>
What's that? An orange. Oh, an orange. An orange would be bloody amazing. Like, I'm not scared of heights, but fuck me. There's a few moments here. Yeah. Those southern boys. Yeah. <laughs> now, that was a real little, um, a little initiation, that was. Boys are just buggered, eh? Didn't bring a whole heap of tucker. And we just, you know, when you get to that stage where you just got the, you got the shakes and you just cooked and you got no grunt left, and you're going through shit you can only just go through when you've at your best for seven hours. And now it's bloody ten minutes back to camp. Downhill easy. Orange time. It can't quite a bit of fresh snow around. She's snowing quite good right now. <sighs> Definitely needed more food for that. What's the time? Like half four? Twenty to five. Twenty to five. We thought we'd shoot out for a quick morning hunt and we shot that tar at nine o'clock. Well, we got out of our wheat gears and um, had a bit of a bite to eat. We had a bacon and egg sandwich, which was bloody tasty. We've had a tiny bit of port. An orange. An orange, the orange was orgasmic. Wasn't it? Um, got some spuds on the fire. We're gonna have a bit of steak and stuff, but um, <clears throat> damn near falling asleep in the chair right now. So I'm gonna sign off day two and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Right, we're actually back tonight because we forgot about the tar nuts and we're about to cook some steak. So we're gonna cook the tar nuts with the steak. So I'm just gonna prep them up a bit first here on Chris's plate. <laughs> so I don't really know how to go about this, but I did hear Smitty saying they've got a bit of a um, tough skin on them. So oh, there you go. We'll just take them out of that cut the string off them oh, see that's the that's the scallop meat there that's the bloody delicacy so we'll just trim them up a bit on Chris's plate on Chris's plate you don't prep tar nuts on your own plate mate everyone knows that Look at that, they're sort of in a, in a secondary skin there. And they're just coming out of that, just gleaming. Prime condition. Prime, you want your tar nuts in good condition. How many baby tar are we about to eat? Millions. Right, we'll put that there later. We'll just save this stuff for well, the stew. That's Chris's plate. That's the stew. That's the stew. And now I'm just gonna um, just ring them up. You know, just nice rings. Oh shit, that t nut's a bit bruised, mate, from the fall down the hill. You know, not ideal nut condition. In eating testicles, we've come up with some um, important questions about testicles. And Chris was like, well, where's the, where's the semen? And I, was, I said, well, I don't know if there's actually, you know, there's not like a bag of semen inside a testicle. And I was saying, the testicle is the organ that produces the semen. And the semen is just a bit off to the side, you know. And... Um, I don't really know where to go with that from there, but that's as far as we've got so far. Yeah, it's as far as we've got with nut chat tonight. And then Chris said, we should be filming this because this is some pretty good nut chat. But I don't know, that, that's my take on it. Because there's no, there's Give it no a lick. actual semen in that. Go on, and mate. Give her a lick. 
Yeah, but it doesn't it. smell like tar. You know, you'd think it'd smell like bloody tar pizzle, but it doesn't at all. And Smitty says it tastes like scallops, so... And I love scallops, so we're into it. <laughs> Alright, so we've got the steak resting. We've got the onions on. And we've got the bull nuts going in. Just got a bit of oil on the other side of the pan there. Cooking it on the old MIA fire. Have you seen this before, Ben? Bull nuts going on your fires, mate? That, that would have gone into the um, bloody development, I'm sure. What are these going to be like for cooking bull nuts? Well, I'm just making a test it out right now. I'd say it's looking quite good. Mm. Little side dish. They've passed. See how it curls up like that? Mm. We did. We did Apparently, that skin on the outside is quite tough. Some yep. good nut chat to come. We'll blow it. Yep, we'll give them a sizzle up and we'll get back to you with the taste test. That little thin bit there, I'll just give them a yeah. little bit of a press down and a good sizzle. I don't want my first bit of bull nut to be rare, you know. I'm just going to give them a bloody crunch of salt. Bloody hot. Mm. Oh, almost dropped it, but not quite. Bloody mild. Very mild. And a bit like a squid ring, or exactly as Smitty said, a scallop. Very mild, nothing wrong with it. You'll be able to wrap your laughing gear around quite a good chunk in here, eh? Oh, I'd say so. See if uh, Josh James is telling the truth. Real scallopy. It is, eh? Real mild. Yeah, real, real scallopy. You see the chewy stuff on the outside, eh? Yeah. But it just tastes like the white of a scallop. Yeah. Very mild, eh? Nothing to it. Yeah. And the, the skins it might be a bit chewy, but the flesh is actually real soft. Yeah. The fact that we're eating semen producers. Well, it's the organ that produces the semen. We've talked about this, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> We talked about it during nut chat, <laughs> and now we're eating. <laughs> we'll do it on the next one. Yeah. This is making me hungry. I'm going to hook into mine. Actually, I'll get the full experience of just a unadulterated big bit. Very <laughs> mild, scallop, almost got like a hint of power. Very seafoody. Yeah. Nothing wrong with them at all. They're not like real, real good or anything, like, ooh, bull nuts. But they're not bad. I'd probably be like, oh, bull nuts if I felt like them. Mm. They're actually alright. Mm. Yeah. You just go a big feed. You just go a big feed of bull nuts. Just probably a big feed of bull nuts. <laughs> just a plate. Just, just cut the nuts off. Cape, head, leave the rest. Just the bull nuts. Just culling bulls for the nuts. nuts. Yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> we'll do Doc a favour. We will cull the nuts off the bulls for you. <laughs> you know breeding. 
Well, you, they could work that out. Mm. Just get the nuts off somehow. Mm. Net, net gun them. Put, put, a, put, a, put a ring on them. And a GPS tracker on the nut sack. No, they dry out. Alright. No, we need cut fresh sun. Fresh nuts. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a morning montage. as big as mine. Yeah. At least. Yeah. You reckon? At, at, dude. I think he's bigger. Is he looking? 221 yards. Okay. That's a drop. 221? Yeah. That's a zero for 200. Okay. So, shoot him. It's wrong. I'll get set up properly with this. Nice Buddha. 
this is like bloody dream case scenario both on the board pressure off if this goes well Ready? Was that high? Was that a hit? No, it's bang on it. It's bang on his shoulder. Okay. But, yeah. Was everything all on, everything was all on zero, eh? Nah. It sounded like it hit the thing two grand. It just, yeah. It just sounded like it hit rock. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I saw a bit of shit kick up behind him. Yeah. That was fucking. I'm sure it was, off. yeah. Come through with the shot. Yeah. All day. No kick. Chris just had a shot at that bull tar. 200 yards, gun zero for 200. He said he was right on, steady as. Um, and I was filming zoomed right in on the big camera, it just looked like a clean mist, didn't hear a, the good whack and he just like casually hopped off. I've had a shot at a rock like right next to where the tar was standing and I just hit smack bang where I was aiming, we were filming with the camera again. So either it's a real ratchet miss or, or it's just bizarre how much it looked like a miss and he's, and it, but it was a hit and it, cause it, it was unless a it, big crack. Oh, there's, I heard the hit, mm. and unless it's hit him right on the point of the shoulder, which can give that cracky yeah. instead of a he thump. He just like there was nothing wrong. And, and we've seen the bush kick up above and behind him. It just looked like a clean miss high, but it could have just punched straight through, and he could have pushed off that bush, which could have made it move, or the bullet could have passed straight through and deflected up and hit that bush. Just when he jumped to that second rock, he looked fine. Oh, I didn't, didn't. I didn't see him do a second jump. Yeah, I just I seen him jump and land and then disappear. Yeah, they're tough buggers though, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, we've got to go over, look. Um, <laughs> either Chris no, is... Story, uh, bring your own gun up uh, the hill. Either Chris is a real shit shot or bull tar are bloody tough. And But they're notorious for being very, very tough, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll go over, look. Just have a good glass right down into all the little gaps. I think you might have bloody missed him, eh? He was right up in that gut. Yeah, yeah we went and had a look, we don't know what happened there. Um, but heading back to camp and tomorrow's another day. Hey, check out that red sky. It is crazy. So just a bit of closing info on today. So Chris knocked his gun around yesterday, and that's what, I mean, there's no point carrying two guns around when we're hunting together. So we took mine up today, um, had that shot, and then I checked mine. It was shooting bang on, and then Chris just set up his gun down here. It's hit smack bang center of that rocket yeah. like 260. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, one of life's mysteries, but um. Go have another crack tomorrow, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, find another one. Right, so first ever taste of tar meat. This is that ball I shot yesterday. This is a real nicely trimmed up hindquarter, uh, bloody hindquarter, um, back steak. Bloody chewy. Put way too much salt and pepper on it. But the flavour's good as gold. <clears throat> way too much pepper. Got a big bit of pepper in the back of my throat. Chilly as hell. If you hung that in a chiller, or you hung that for like a week, it'd be good as gold. Mm. Mm. Tell me. How about that for some heat? Just 
Come on, bro. Well, we've got a mean feed on and a new plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're starting the big two-day overnight emission right over to the back of the block where um, I'm pretty sure there should be some pretty good hunting over there. And But, but right now we've got the hell feed on. We've got um, bull taha right there, which we've both sampled. It's bloody nice. We've got a mountain of back steak and onion over there. And... There's a bit of pre-boiled um, carrot, pumpkin and potato. And we've got our beans coming up too. So we're about to bloody trough out. Um, I'll give a bit of this harder go, eh? So am I going to be able to grab that? It's not too hot. Yeah. So this is bull tar heart. That's bloody good, eh? Mm. It's really good, really tender, mild. And then we've had another chew on that back steak. There's no goaty smell to it at all. Like old bull tar, mm. it's just chewy. Mm. It's just chewy. If that was like, um, even if you know you hung that those hindquarters for a week in okay. the winter, it'd be mint. It'd be primo sausages or something. But we've got to shoot them. Mm, yep. I've got to shoot a nice nanny or a real young bull and have a go on some real high quality tarmac. You have that last mean bit? No, you have the mean bit. That, that other bit's going to be pretty grisly, eh? Yeah, I'll have it. Sorry. Eat the fucking newspaper at the moment. But anyway, mate, I'm talking with a mouthful. Um, so that's the plan tomorrow. Mean overnight mission. Going to get up, not rush it. Um, get up, get our gear ready. It's, it's probably not going to be. It's really been evening, eh? Sorry. Like the Tara laid down right till buddy. The last hour. Yeah, the last hour, mm. and even the last half hour, they just re they just really start pouring out of the woodwork. Um, so we're going to get completely sorted in the morning. Massive feed and go right over the other side of the block and set up a camp over there and um, glass some real good areas and then we've got all day the next day hopefully to retrieve bulls and cape out and come back. Mm. Is that too cocky? No, it's not too cocky. <laughs> Slayer's back on form, so we're right. Sweet, see you tomorrow. So, hey. mm. Alright, you can just, you can just see. Much as I like Radix, you can't beat a real feed. Check this out. She's barely 10 yards away. <laughs> quite tar. Might go up, walk up and give her a cuddle, I reckon. <laughs> it's never a good sign. I sort of tried to go a slightly different way and we ended up climbing, crawling through this absolute shit. She stood up out of her bed. She's obviously not used to having company up here. Um, so I don't know. We'll just keep going up and Gotta cut around one way or the other, but it doesn't feel that good. This is we're right below where you shot from last night. She was probably down here then too. There's tar tracks all through the snow. It's been big full moons here. And um, the tar obviously come right out, out in this open stuff all night I'd say.
well we're on the tops in the Landsborough in the middle of June and it's just not a breath of wind not a cloud in the sky and it's bloody warm hey yeah sunburn weather yeah you're gonna have to strip right it down to a t-shirt I was just saying you could probably go quite a few ballot periods up here and quite, do quite a bit of winter hunting and without getting another day quite like this it's pretty insane eh? Shit, yeah. what a day. and we've got all day up here and all day tomorrow we've got all our gear to do an overnight trip right over the back corner of our block some bloody nice looking bushage over along there in there So yeah, that's the plan. Fly camping over the back corner of the block. Should be pretty interesting over there. Do the same thing, eh? That last half hour, she'll be all go. Should we all go get over there, get set up, camp, and set the camp up somewhere where we can just literally just slip out in the morning and just park up. Yeah. On like light breaking. Go out and retrieve our bulls yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we should. There we go, getting bloody cocky again. <laughs> PM tackle tip, don't ever come up in the snow without sunglasses, even in the middle of the June and it's all cold and shady and scrubby at camp and you think you won't need them and you leave them at camp, bring them, and a hat. Thing one and thing two have given up. Okay, so in full disclosure here, um, the Flatlanders have left camp at 11 thinking oh it's only 1500 meters around the corner over here left camp at 11 we're meant to leave at 10 should have left at 6 or 7 and it's after lunch and we're still directly behind camp with 1500 meters to go with no sunglasses no sunscreen we spent like literally five minutes looking that way and we could barely keep our eyes open anymore and we're just going to call it because we've got, they've been seeing, we're not going right over the back. Um, we just don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Goal for next year, I think. Goal for next year. Oh, bet you went flat. But um, no, nah, I was just saying, um, full disclosure, we basically stuffed up. We um, <laughs> left way too late, um, way underestimated what it was going to take to just get up here around the top of this creek and sidle 1,500 metres. We thought oh, it was 1,500 metres, we would have shoot up the hill and shoot along and drop down to those another guts but it was a massive big full day mission and again we spent my eyes are right now because I'm turning around looking down but five ten minutes looking straight up and my eyes were stuffing right out and um, pretty inexperienced um, I've heard of people getting completely snowblind can't see <laughs> set the e-perb off so we just it's one of those things I've said it before in one of my videos as soon as I'm thinking should I be doing this pulling pin straight away got to be 100% confident um, and again there's heaps of country around this side that we haven't um, you know where I shot my ball around this side the other day first day there's heaps of country around there that we haven't even touched for two days we we're seeing nannies down here you know straight above camp middle of the day um, we saw a ball down here last night so we're just going to call it quits play it safe and concentrate on getting Chris a ball down around here hopefully tonight and then we'd still like to try to shoot a couple of nannies um, tomorrow or the next day um, we've actually still got we've got we've still got two evenings we've got eh? Till Thursday night to pull the trigger but the weather might mightn't be that good tomorrow night so just same thing try try not to get blinded by the bulls um, <laughs> and blind you know and do anything silly and get excited and charge right over there and end up in the shit up here you know blinded by the bulls blinded by the bulls i was telling chris a story about a mate that found a really good snapper fishing spot back in the day in a tiny boat and um they caught heaps of massive snapper and got all excited and the sea cut up the next day but they were just blinded by the snaps and they went out anyway and they almost bloody capsized and drowned and so we don't want to do that no <laughs> No. <laughs> not even not even close preferably. We're heading back for the home front snow. Yeah. Scrub bulls. 
back to climbing around the scrub. What we're, we're, what we're used to. That's what we're comfortable with. But now we'll get it. We've learnt heaps. Yep, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. Righto, Napjack, do you want to have a feed? <laughs> I'm Is good, your eh? Fucking little duck getting hungry. No, nah, I'm good from that bloody massive powerhouse feed we had this morning. Yeah, I'm good. I ate two packs of rolled oats and, and a big feed. <laughs> and about like, 1.8 kilos of bacon and eggs and toast and <laughs> potato and coomer and stuff. But it's hundred percent worth the climb this morning just to just to, see just to be up here. Get to, get your phone and get some mean stills across by the way. You can model it. You're a lion, you're a tiger. <laughs> oh the lotus. Dude, how's those bluffs over there? <laughs> Downward dog. Oh. <laughs> You'll be the bloody downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> You're looking bloody good, man. Snow yoga. Oh, good. This is this is altitude sickness kicking in now. <laughs> we brought sunnies too. Both had sunnies, packed them. Oh no, you need sunnies. Definitely wouldn't go anywhere near the snow and sunnies. This morning, you taking the sunnies? Nah, nah, neither. Sweet, let's go. <laughs> Rookie move. Oh mate. We're learning, we're learning. Yeah. We've still got a lot of a lot of days left. Yeah. In this block. And then we've got another five or six days mooching around the South Island. Might go chase some chamois. Might go get pissed in a pub at Wanaka and We'll definitely do that. Have a mean feed, <laughs> have a shower. We smell like a couple North Island billy goats. These tar are probably thinking, what the hell? I, th I think I smell quite good. So I just want to do a quick closing note here and um, on pulling out of this mission, because no doubt there'll be plenty of people laughing at it saying, ah, the bloody amateurs. <laughs> um, but I always try to think long term and I'm trying to, like I'm new to hunting in the South Island and I've been just quietly chipping away at it over the last couple of years and I'm always thinking long term and trying not to make a big stuff up that knocks my confidence or you know even worse bloody kills you or hurts you um, I'd rather just chip away and just take a little bit bigger bite every time keeping safe every time but just getting better and better and more confident um, and think about it long term you know that's way better than um, trying to be the man on the, the first time in country like this and having a big stuff up you know that's way more embarrassing than um, pulling out on getting to the back of the block you know because it bloody happened someone just died in this river down here a few days ago um, with the chop we were talking about it on the way in um, guys come down and lose their trucks in the rivers you know in Otago there and um, you know, people get in the shit and set the e-perbs off. It happens, so um, you got to be bloody careful up here, eh? We're just having a yarn about these um, mountain sticks. Um, the website there. This is, I just paid, this is not bloody sponsored or anything, we just bought them to use on this trip. Um, Chris was just saying how much you like, oh, the, the, we're both just saying how they're bl really bloody good, eh? Yeah, like, you can extend right out, especially tall buggers like us. Like, just like a walking stick, or you can shrink them right up mm. to a little ice axe. Yep. You can chop kindling with them, we showed that we could chop kindling with them yesterday. Yep. Can dig steps when I was climbing up the scrub before I had my fingers like that and I was climbing up the scrub. Yeah, there's a couple of little ideas that I'd tweak on them um, or ideas that I'll pass on to the guy um, but uh, bloody good. Any closing comments on the mountain stick Chris? We're having a bit of a leaning rest also. <laughs> <laughs> 
all of the tar we've found is like kind of sneaking right up to these little edges so you you we're almost stalking them um it's not it hasn't been the big open glassing stuff and any stuff that we can just sit in and glass um from miles away we just haven't seen a tar in it okay. um because i guess well because we're fifth period so probably any tar that's been hanging around in that stuff's had lead slung at them oh well, yeah um, but there's plenty, and they are, eh? You've got to get right on top of them to you see them. you just got to go just a little bit further than you'd think. Yep. And then they just everywhere. Yeah, they're right in the little pockets. Yep. And last hour's good. The last half hour is just dynamite. They're just running all over the show. Right, update. So Chris has done an amazing spotting, actually, on a big bull down on the beach down here. Um, really good spotting. He was sitting in the shade in a tiny little pocket in the beach, 330 metres away. And he looks like a bloody good bull. Big, massive mane. Um, and I, the pack's are a little bit back, so I didn't have the spotting scope, but I set up the um, night force, which is a 22 times, and zoomed in. And um, we're probably looking at him for about a minute or two, and he was there with a nanny. And just as we got the gun set up, and we went, man, he's a sh we, we want to shoot him. Um, he just stood up and just slowly wandered off. It was, it was literally the little pocket he was sitting in was about big enough for one or two tar to stand in, in the beach. And um, he's walked off. So we set up, we got the gun dialed in, and we're just hoping he's going to show up again. He should show up again. Um, that one was in the same spot. Yeah. He's with a nanny on heat. And. Um, so we just left the packs 50 metres back and just brought the guns and the binos and the range finders and everything just around the corner to get set up here. That, this is the gut straight below us here is that last gut I got to the other night, that first night um, when those um, young bulls were running around right in front of me. Um, there was another bull with them too, a younger bull, but there's a big thumper bull just down here and we got a pretty good chance of him showing up. He's following a nanny. I'm going to go get the packs and bring the packs over to Chris. And then I'm actually going to have a bit of a muck around up above us here. Because he's on... He's on... Uh, which spur is it? There's a tree. He's sort of on that spur down in there, like right down in the gut. So he's on the back, the back side of another, the front side of another little spur right down on one of the folds and he just like walked in behind another spur. So um, they're probably going to come out in that gut up there um, tonight. They actually both were walking up. Um, Chris has just spotted. Another bull. It's just come out. He's trying to get him. Just down there. A bit of loving at the moment. Yeah. This is a good little eagle's nest. <laughs> we want that big dog. There's two nannies there too. That he's following. So yeah, it's really just mission get Chris a decent bull. Yeah, we just carried us out. We're already at the top of the gut. See the bull just ass poking out? Yeah. And there's another one coming up around to another nanny. So they're coming up, oh yeah, they're coming up this way. Yeah. He's got a main coat. Oh. Yeah. I'll go get the packs. Oh yeah. She's all go. Chris is looking at a bull. Him. Did, you, did you shoot him? Well, fucking rolled him. <laughs> oh, mate. 
He stepped out of the trees and I just cracked it through his shoulder. Nice. Old Slayer. How did he look? Yeah, he was alright. He wasn't massive, but I'm fucking just wanted to get my first bowl, <laughs> so I'm stoked. Sweet. Sweet. Just watch that big one doesn't step back out into that clearing over the other side. Yeah, because it'd be my shot now, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just tipped over, man. He just awesome, he just bro. rolled straight into that bush. Awesome. But he's so, right down in that shit, so. Oh. Well, I can see him. I can see a tail line on its side. Yeah, he's just down in the bush down below. Yep. Right, so Chris is happy with that bull. He's going to head back towards camp and watch that nice little gut that we've seen all those other tar in back towards camp. And I'm seeing how far I can make my way around this stuff and see if I can have a look into that gut that that big bull was headed for. It's not a long distance at all, but she's, um, yeah, she's pretty steep stuff with a bit of snow on it, so, and it's all big drops straight over this front. But, um, I think I'll, hopefully I'll get around. But, um, yeah, I'll just take my time. If I can't get there, I, I, I can't get there, um, but we'll go have a look. He looked like a cracker bull, he really did. shoot down to this little knob right in front of me here and do some glassing got a real good outlook here I can see a lot more country that it's likely that that bull's gonna come up into and I'm also at a nice distance back that I'm not right on top of it with my wing going down into it too so I'm probably better off right here somewhere oh, I'm seeing tar I've got to get hunkered down because there's tar moving around all over the place. Like about 100 metres away. I've got a really, really good vantage point here. There's tar jumping around just over here. I'll let you know if something happens. see the bull. He's right there somewhere but he's behind a tree. He must be right there somewhere. He'll come out. The nannies, I can see two of the nannies. There were three and that bull's chasing one of the nannies. I think he's in behind a big tree there. I just need to wait it out. One of the nannies is looking at me and blowing. I think I can see the bull. <clears throat> I think I can just see the arse end of him in behind a tree. Yeah.
Oh no, yep, there he is. Got him. Got him. <sighs> that was bloody amazing. Right when I hit him, he was doing the bloody head right up, lip curling. I was looking at it right through the scope. It was bloody amazing. I might try to crack a couple of these nannies here. skyline <clears throat> I'm not going to shoot on the skyline I don't know if you guys can see that but they're just going over the skyline over there <sighs> man That was unreal. Chris spotted that bull down on the beach. It was an unbelievable spotting. And they were coming up this way. He was following nannies and I just knew. And right at the same time we had tar coming up underneath us. It's that time of day that they're just coming, they're just climbing up. That's what they do. Hang out down on the beach during the day and come up into the scrub. And we just watched that bull about 40 minutes ago walking up. But I knew I could, I was pretty sure I could get to here. I at least wanted to have a crack, you know, but to, for it to work out like that, and he'd, he'd climb straight up, and they'd actually come my way a little bit, like they made it easier than what they could have, and they just come straight up, like right where I needed them. That's unreal. Right, I'm gonna um, just switch the camera off and have a bit of a think and a bit of a look around down below me here and work out what I'm gonna do. I might come back tomorrow and retrieve them. Because if I leave now, I can get back to the camp real easy and safe in the daylight. And I've got all day tomorrow to come and get him. But he's only just over there, but there's a couple of real deep craggy guts below me. So I'll, I'll, I'll just switch off and have a think about it. Now, nah, so it's bloody steep down here and there's rock faces and stuff. It's just, it's a no-go. And the thing is, is... It's really easy coming around down the bottom. Um, and we're going to have to come through there to get Chris's bull in the morning. And then we can just come straight through and up to mine. Right, I'm going to head back to camp. I'm going to got to pick my ice axe up just up here. I'm going to shoot across the gear, my tent and jet ball and stuff. Pick that up. And I'm going to shoot back to camp. Jesus, it is cold. It is bloody freezing. I, I don't know how else to explain how cold it is right now. It is way colder than what it's been so far and it's already been cold. Right, so I'm back at the gear. Uh, haven't got much time left, so I'm just going to pack this up and shoot back to camp. It's a pretty basic, just sidle and drop straight back down to camp.
pretty crazy. It's pretty intense being here. Well, we're back at camp. Um, the wind was wrong over Chris's side, didn't, and you didn't see anything. Um, we've had some almonds. We've got some awesome veggies on the fire cooking up. We're going to have a massive feed of bacon here. So we've got about a kg and a half of bacon left. Um, and we're just having a Ruahini port. It's the Fiji one. And it <laughs> is like after after a big day on the hill eh? and did we we didn't have one last night eh so we haven't had no, one we were waiting till they got me bull yeah and um it is bloody <sighs> you do that william <laughs> it is ridiculous how good that tastes after a day like that bulls on the deck <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a busy day tomorrow yeah Real busy day picking up everything. I'd love to shoot like a um, half grown kid. Mm, beautiful eating, eh? They were the ones goat hunting. You just want to shoot a mm. half grown kid, man, and like roast the whole back wheels mm. in the campy. Boy, we have got to use that campy. Oh, I just day. like my mouth watered a little bit when I said that. Yeah. left of where we've been so far and I've got an awesome view like right by camp right down across all this awesome front country and right over to where Chris that bull that Chris had a shot at was and that nanny and all up here there's an awesome glassing spot that we haven't even seen right by camp so I'm gonna come just down here and have a good glass I can also see over the front here where we saw that nanny and kid the other day, so I should be able to pick something up here right next to camp. I'll do some glassing and let you know if I come up with anything. Bloody cares. I walk five metres away from my pack and the cares are just hammering. Gears, buddy, just hammering our gear, chewing holes in our tents, and just <laughs> going real hardcore. Um, what I was going to say was um, it's always a guessing game as to what animals are going to be doing and when they're going to be doing it, but in real cold conditions like this. I've found it with even reds, um, if there's not too much pressure on them really early in the morning, and definitely with Rusa and Sika, you think daybreak would be the best, but um, it's often a bit after daybreak, just as the sun starts coming up, um, and just before the day's really going to warm up, animals can start moving around, and you know that's what we've seen here too, we saw that nanny and kid down the bottom there, I can't remember what time that was, but it wasn't early. It might have even been like, you know, closer to nine o'clock. That nanny was up here at bloody 11 the other night. Um, I just think uh, it'll be over the next couple of hours that something starts moving around out here as the sun comes up. Um, particularly with a massive full moon and these dead calm nights. These tar are having a field day at night, eh? Coming right up into the stuff and 
going all over the place. There's fresh tracks just everywhere um, in the mornings. So I think by this time of day, they've been going all night and they are um, probably pretty full and tired. But I think it's about that mid-morning that just the odd one, the nannies and that are getting up and having a quick walk around and a feed and um, take a piss and a shit and reshuffle and um, sit back down again so I'm just going to lurk for a couple of hours as the sun comes up and things start moving around but I'll keep you posted so just going back to what I was saying about daybreak um, daybreak can be bloody good it's definitely worth getting up early and getting out there right on daybreak um, I'm just saying it's not the be all and the end all and it's easy to get up really early at daybreak come out to an area like this glass the whole thing and nothing's there and think well nothing's coming out in the mornings and then go back to camp or go hunting somewhere else and an hour out or two hours later there'd be animals all through here you know so <clears throat> it's worth watching some spots right through mid-morning even to midday and just get a feel for exactly what's going on a little bit later on in the morning it can be surprising but daybreak's still good I'm not saying it's not um, I've had a decent glass here not a real good glass but I've had a pretty good look around nothing's jumping out at me I'm gonna go right along this front edge here looking right over the edge um, which is something we haven't done right along the front here and that's really where we've been seeing all the tar so I'm gonna go do that now and I've just taken my rifle off my pack and I've put my ice axe on my pack and as I get down there and creeping along that edge looking over I'm actually going to have one up the spout on safety um, so I'm basically ready to shoot tar right in front of me because that's what's been happening a lot of the time said the guy at the hangar always look down look down we didn't even know this whole area was here maybe that's why there's been bulls where we've been going because previous periods been hunting this oh, I'm going to do some glassing So I've been glassing all over the place and I can hear something moving around like right in under me here. Pretty close I can hear rocks moving around or something feeding. I have a real careful look but it's real bloody icy and just goes and drops straight off. But there's something moving around right under me here. I just shot a nanny and kid and when I took the camera off my head it wasn't recording anymore I'm having a lot of problems with the cold and batteries and the camera's stopping um, 
but I just come down here, I could hear that sound and I just come and sat down and watched and listened and I could hear them but I couldn't see them and then I just caught a little flicker of movement just only 100 meters across the face so I don't quite know what's going on with the footage at the moment what I've filmed and what I haven't because I'm having a bit of problem with the camera freezing up but I just shot that nanny and kid straight across here which is good it's good to shoot some nannies and kids while you're in here for because the Department of Conservation is in here culling anyway and I think it's good for hunters to show that we want to put in a little bit of effort even when we're hunting bulls to shoot a few nannies and kids it'd be good if we shot a few more while we were in here I think it's good to put it in videos too and put it on social media and then just get that feeling out there that we're aware of it and that we need, we are trying to shoot more um, that nanny will be good at eating but that kid was the perfect half grown fat fluffy little kid that I reckon that's going to be some bloody good eating and they're right there easy retrieve so I might have a radix and stuff my camera down my top for a while and try to warm it up and um, maybe something else will pop out and but otherwise we'll um, retrieve these tar in a minute they're literally like right there Hope of blood right there. Here's the nanny right below me. Here's the nanny there. I thought I saw the kid from back up there. My first nanny tar, that. Oh, yeah. She's not too old either, she'll be bloody good eating. Where's that kid? Right, so I don't know what's happened with filming, but yeah, I just couldn't find that kid up there. Um, if I had a dog, I'd find it straight away, but I crawled around up there for about 20 minutes and it's not the safest, and I just can't find it. But I got the nanny and shot through the shoulders with the rim mag, so I've just taken the um, hindquarters and back stakes there. Got the big camera out now because the GoPro keeps freezing. Uh, I've got a nanny down here at 350, which I won't go and retrieve, but. Um, have a see if I can pick it off. Yeah, there she is there, but that's three fifty which is a pretty takeable shot with the 7mm so um, I'll set up and have a crack at her Yep, she's down Finish my radix So we're just back at camp <clears throat> um, We just packed that meat on ice and the chilli bin all wrapped up Chris is just putting that back in the tent um, about lunch time I'm just gonna have a bite to eat and sort our stuff out then we're gonna go find these bulls we should probably be right to go get them tomorrow but the um, the weather's supposed to 
turn about lunchtime tomorrow so just in case that comes in a little bit harder than expected we want to go get them bulls now right we've had a feed coffee bit of a sort out feeling a bit buckled and a bit buggered but we've got to go up and get these bulls in case they at least get to them and mark them in case we have a dump of snow overnight and we can't find them tomorrow so um, I'm getting pretty short on batteries and we aren't we haven't got a heap of time so I'm just going to um, might go a bit lighter on filming on this mission but um, I'll keep you updated anyway here's the fastest we've done that by a long shot eh most direct we've been zigzagging up we just snotted straight up We've got um, blood and stuff here. This is where he was when. That's where he landed, yeah. Yeah. You hit him just up there, eh? And yep, when he came out of that scrub and he just rolled straight away. Yeah. Much better. And there's blood and stuff here. Blood right there. Oh, there he is. Right there. You can see him? Just there. Yep. Oh, yes. Mate. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Oi! I can, I'm seeing a bit of curl from here. He's a darker bull. Hey! Oh. Bro, he's got a nice bit of curl. Hey. He's got a nice, he's got nice horns, dude. Oh, he's nice and dark, hey? Mate, he's a bloody doozy. Look at him. If he's big, you all must be massive. Bro. Now you shot the dark horse. Mate, that's tw that's, tw that's 12. That's 12. That's Easy. 12 all day, eh? Well, there's six there. It's got to go 12. Dude, dude. 13 inch bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. He yes. He Oi. is just an absolute stonker, eh? Yeah, man. Unbelievable. 30! <laughs> Your one must be 30 because oh, he was big in the who, pino. Who knows? I don't care, man. Bro. And he's got the mega mane. He's just dark. That is just an absolute thumper, eh? Hopefully he's easy enough to cape. Should oh, be. my gosh. Dude. He's... Well, you wanted a good bull tar. Oh, I got one. <laughs> His cape is. Bro, that's wicked. Look, the cur mate. curling back in. How good is that? Dude. You take the photos anyway. It is ridiculous. Oh. Mate, that is so cool. He's nice and dark, eh? Oh, man. Is that an age thing? Yeah, look, he's still light underneath. Is the, uh, but do the old boys go dark? Or... Well, I don't know, but all I know is the skin's What's going... his teeth like? <sighs> yeah. See, that first ball I shot had way more worn teeth than that. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, man. man. That's just ridiculous, yes, eh? slight problem with this route it's just mega bluffs all the way around big bloody 200 meter icy bluffs all the way around the bottom here I can't go through this way I wonder if I'll have to have a look a bit higher yeah, there's a nanny standing just here when I come over my initial feeling when getting my bull tonight is probably zero ever if i can get it ever it's 50 50. man you just no absolutely no idea that that is there from where i shot from last night up there eh my bull is just over see that beach right there that spur he, he went just over the back of that spur he's just over there it's only 200 meters away but this is just massive big sheer bluffs. I'm guessing that those bluffs go all the way down. But if I can get across up there somewhere, there's plenty of that's plenty of scrub and that's not too bad. This stuff up here. 
I can get around up there, but I can't get across straight across here. It's a massive big bluff over there. Can't even get up this way at all. Stinks of tar up here. I'm just gonna take my pack off here and have a little look around. Just gotta be bloody careful. Anyone home? Don't want to get bowled off the bluff by a big bull tar. This is just getting too dicey without my pack. I'm, I'm questioning myself here. He's right there. But it's just not like, look at this. What's under me? This is all right. Where I'm, what I'm sitting on now. But right there, just getting up that knuckle there. There's just, 
It's just too much. And the, and it's right above this. Like, if I slip there and get half a second momentum, I'm gone, burger. Down there. The thing is, where he fell over the other side could be something like this too. Look, bugger, we couldn't see any of this from just up there. It just looked like nice little scrubby guts like this. But, um... Everything's just so hard to read here, eh? And it's just so gnarly. Just been sitting here looking at the GPS and assessing the whole thing. And, um... I might change my mind overnight and come have a go, but I don't think I'm getting to that bull. It's just going around above is, it's huge. It's like way further than what we climbed up to yesterday. It's probably right up into the snow. Like it's massive, it's huge. And going around the bottom to even begin to get across there is way bigger than what we did just retrieving my bull that day which was a whole day and almost you know it was okay but um, it was a little bit touch and go a couple of times <sighs> yeah it's a bloody tough pill to swallow but um, I don't think I'm getting over there I don't know I'll assess it tonight I'll keep looking at maps and We'll have a talk about it and work it out, but right now, um, I don't see how I can get over there. And it's just not worth the risk, you know. Are we sidling a little bit, or have we got to go straight up? We've just got to get just like footing there, and we're out right there. How much do I, do I try to <sighs> Yeah, we've got to sidle out now. This is tiny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to a spot where I'm not hanging off the side of a cliff. Was overhanging yeah, bro. Oh. <laughs> 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 Epic. You fucking did it, man. Scrub balls all day. So mean. Oh. Do you want to shoot it? Close. Right there. She's not going to last long though. I'll grab the big camera out, eh? Um, we're just going to have a crack at a nanny down here. Right there, look. Right there on the bush edge. We'll send Doc the invoice for that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be um, that'll be uh, helicopter flights back and forth, and uh, accommodation and food all round. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Nicola. <laughs> Right, day six, so a bit of a change of plans overnight. We were going to have one more day up our sleeve to sort of head skin this bull and have a go up to more nannies, but um, we've got an in-reach here, so we're getting forecasts and we're in touch with the outside world and um, there's quite a big 
change in weather coming um, sort of midday today. <clears throat> it's Thursday and it might be pretty crap right through till Sunday, Monday. So um, we put the call out and if a chopper can get in, um, James Scott's going to be here. He's going to pick up the crew across the river. Um, so if we see him come past at about 10 or 11 o'clock, then we're definitely getting picked up. So we're packing everything up um, and getting out of here today. So um, fingers crossed he can make it in. It's, he's clagging in real quick. Here's our ride. James Scott's here. He's picking up the guys across the river, so we've got about 10, 20 minutes to break down the tent and get the hell out of here. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Helps us out, helps us make more videos, keeps us motivated. Thanks for watching. See you later.